Is there anyone who would like to challenge me? Well, um, what an incredibly stupid question. You give me the awful impression, of, I hate to have to say it, of someone who hasn't read any of the arguments against your position ever. The empty life of this ugly little charlatan proves only one thing, that you can get away with the most extraordinary offences to morality and to truth in this country if you'll just get yourself called reverend. Are you asking me or telling me? I'm, I'm asking you a question. Well, why don't you listen to what I've got to say, you're, you're saying that they're ridiculous so listen, people. I've had to be sitting in, your, in, in this, this chair situation. for half an hour listening to you being a megaphone for frauds, and I'm giving you my response. People like that should be out in the street shouting and hollering with a cardboard sign and selling pencils from a cup. Guys, stop. God bless us all. Just stop and let's have a meaningful conversation well, don't instead me of people and talking on top don't of each other. Don't invite me on and tell me to uh, keep quiet. Your audience, which will clap apparently anything, is frivolous. Um, no, uh, so I'm, just, I'm just uh, saying. Uh, <laughs> that's what you, I took, said. you took up all the time for my answer with your long, well unlettered question. I think it was David Hume who put it slightly vulgarly. This was again about the virgin birth, I think. Which is more likely, that the whole natural order is suspended, or that a Jewish minx should tell a lie? <laughs> there has to be an answer to this kind of question. Is it not the case that the spread of Christianity, about which you spoke so warmly and affectingly in your opening remarks, attributing it to it's in the innate truth of the Bible story uh, was spread by that means or because the Emperor Constantine decided to make Christianity the official religion of the Roman Empire which in your view contributed more to the spread of the faith uh, the Holy Spirit I rest my case in order to be Christian you have to believe that for 98,000 years our species suffered and died, most of its children dying in childbirth, most other people having a life expectancy of about 25, dying of their teeth, famine, struggle, bitterness, war, suffering, misery, all of that for 98,000 years, heaven watches it with complete indifference. And then 2,000 years ago thinks, that's enough of that, we should, it's time to intervene. The best way to do this would be by condemning someone to a human sacrifice somewhere in the less literate parts of the Middle East. Not, don't let's appear to the Chinese, for example, where people can read and study evidence and have a civilization. Let's go to the desert and have another revelation there. This is nonsense. You, it, it can't be believed by a thinking person. All of this could be part of a plan. There is no way an atheist can prove it's not. But it's some plan, isn't it? With mass destruction, pitiless extermination, uh, annihilation going on all the time, and all of this set in motion on a scale that's absolutely beyond our imagination in order that the Pope can tell people not to jerk off. It is a horrible idea that there is somebody who owns us, who makes us, who supervises us, waking and sleeping, who knows our thoughts, who can convict us of thought crime, who can do thought crime just for what we think. To demand this, to wish this to be true, is to wish to live as an abject slave. I mean to say it infects us in, the, in our most basic integrity. It says we can't be moral without Big Brother, without a totalitarian permission. It means we can't be good to one another. It means we can't think with, without this. We, we must be afraid. We must also be forced to love someone who we fear. The essence of sadomasochism at the essence of abjection, the essence of the master's slave relationship, and that knows that death is coming and can't wait to bring it on. I say this is evil, and uh, though I do some nights stay home, I enjoy more uh, the nights when I go out and fight against this ultimate wickedness and ultimate stupidity. And I'll tell you something, if I was told to do what all monotheists are told to do, and admire the man who said, yes, I'll gut my kid to show my love of God, I'd say, no, fuck you. One of the things I live for is to return a stout and joyful non-Serviam to this dictator who I'm pleased to find doesn't really exist, but is instead a creation of those who want to install a theocracy in the real life where I can participate, and I'm not going to give them an inch. The second uh, thing I live for is um, 
if not exactly passing on my genes, taking part in activities that might allow those genes to be passed on. <laughs> Call someone an imam or a priest or a reverend, there's nothing they can't get away with in our culture. <laughs> If I could change one thing, it would be that. The second would be when someone gets up and says, I'm a person of faith, that you, they don't get respect for it. They, expect, they think that's a respect-producing statement. I am a person of faith. You know, I'm a person who will believe practically anything or no evidence at all. <laughs> I think what I mainly live for is uh, contemplating the misfortunes of other people. Um, well, that leads me to a very that and uh, that and vindication being proved repeatedly and over and over again right when other people were wrong that does a lot for me if you want to get good people to do wicked things you need religion I do not think that any person looking at a newborn baby would think how wonderful what a gift but now just let's start sawing away at its genitalia with a sharp stone who would give them that idea if not the godly? And what kind of argument from design is this? Babies are not born beautiful, they're born ugly. They need to be sawn a bit. Because the handiwork of God is such garbage. Well, honestly. Uh, Tertullian, one of the church fathers, said that one of the great things about being in heaven was you'd be able to watch the, the writhings and the tortures of those who'd been sent to hell. We see why hell is unpleasant. Why is heaven such fun? It seems to be rather dutiful. Endless praise, endless worship endless subjection, uh, endless tedium. Uh, you think that the Lord himself after the first five billion years would have had enough of the songs of praise. No, it's got to go on forever. Oh, well, I think mockery of religion is uh, one of the uh, most essential things. Because to demystify a supposedly holy texts that are dictated uh, by God and show that they are man-made, what you have to show their in internal inconsistencies and absurdities and one of, the, one of the beginnings of human emancipation is the ability to laugh at authority. It's, a, it's, it's an indispensable thing. People can call it blasphemy if they like, but they, if they call it that, they have to assume that there's something to be blasphemed, some divine word. Well, I don't accept the premise. I dare say you know what the Buddhist says to the hot dog vendor. You don't? He says, make me one with everything. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's, wait, wait, that's only part one, because the Buddhist then hands over a $50 bill and waits while he munches, and uh, nothing happens. And he says to the hot dog vendor, okay, well, what about my change? And the hot dog vendor says, change comes only from within. <laughs> I myself have never heard anything more profound than that. I know what's coming, I know no one beats these odds and it's a matter of getting used to that and growing up and realizing that you're expelled from your mother's uterus as if shot from a cannon towards a barn door studded with old nail files and rusty hooks. It's a matter of how you use up the intervening time in an intelligent and ironic way. It will happen to all of us that at some point you get tapped on the shoulder and told not just that the party's over, but slightly worse, the party's going on, but you have to leave. <laughs> and, it's, and it's going on without you. That's, that's, the, that's the reflection, I think, that most upsets people about their demise. All right then, let's, because it might make us feel better, let's pretend the opposite. Instead, you'll get tapped on the, on the shoulder and told, great news, this party's going on forever, and you can't leave. <laughs> you, you've got to stay. The boss says so, and he also insists that you have a good time. To me, the offer of certainty, the offer of complete security, the offer of an impermeable faith that can't give way, is an offer of something not worth having. And I'd urge you to look at those of you who tell you, those people who tell you at your age, that you're dead till you believe as they do. What a terrible thing to be telling to children. And that you can only live. And that you can only live by accepting an absolute authority. Don't think of that as a gift. Think of it as a, think of it as a poison chalice. Push it aside however tempting it is.
take the risk of thinking for yourself, much more happiness, truth, beauty, and wisdom will come to you that way. Thank you. How much longer are you going to do this? Till I drop. <laughs>